You know the so-called white man that claim to be a Jew. You say something about him on TV, he'll shut your show down. You say something about him on the radio, he'll shut your radio station down. Because they work for Satan. You can't speak against Satan in this country. That's treason. That's unlawful. How dare you? We speak against Satan all day, man, because we out here under the authority of Christ. So we got no problem telling you that them lying bastards are not the Jews. Oh, they said, I mean, that was harsh that I called him a bastard, huh? Yeah, it was harsh. Maybe we need to get the scripture to show them that they are bastards. It's biblical prophecy that the so-called white man claim to be a Jew that's over in that land were going to be called bastards. To be honest, all the other nations are bastards because they don't have a father. I'm trying to raise some people up to ask some questions out here. See anybody in the car like, how dare you say that? But I ain't going to stop, though. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to go over there, but I'm shocked and appalled by what he's saying. <laughs> Read that for me in the book of Zechariah, ninth chapter. Zechariah 9 and 6. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. You sure it said bastard, brother? They can't be in the Bible. Read that again. And a bastard. And a bastard. A fatherless child, read. Shall dwell in Ashdod. Shall dwell in Ashdod. Ashdod is a seaport city over there in Jerusalem. So who's dwelling there right now? What nation of people is over there claiming that's their land getting blown to hell and back by the Palestinians? So-called white man claiming to be a Jew. Lord said he's a bastard. But I made a statement though, didn't I? I said that all the other nations are bastards. Let's find out why. Give me Exodus, the fourth chapter, the 22nd verse. Give y'all a little history lesson. The nation of Israel, those of Negro and Hispanic descent, we were the last nation born on the planet Earth. <laughs> 18 nations on the planet Earth. The 18th nation was us, nation of Israel. So, if the father of each one of those nations, 18 nations, that means what? 18 different sons, correct? So, who would get the inheritance of the father? It would be the firstborn son, wouldn't it? The very firstborn son would get the inheritance, wouldn't it? But we the 18th son. We the 18th nation to come on the planet Earth. But let's find out what the Lord said about us. Exodus 4 and 22, read that. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son. It says Israel, the nation of Israel is my son, read. Even my firstborn. Even my firstborn. Now how can we be the 18th born and the firstborn? You know how we the firstborn? Because the other 17 sons are not acknowledged by the Most High Christ. He does not acknowledge them as sons. So guess what? The so-called white man, or let's call let's be politically right, the so-called Caucasian, the African, the Ethiopian, the Arab, or Syrian, whatever you would call itself, the Eskimos, the Hawaiians, the Chinese, the Japanese, the East Indians, they ain't got no daddy. <laughs> they are bastards according to the word of God. Because why? Our father, the most high Christ, says that Israel is his firstborn. I Meaning what? We his only child. So those of Negro and Hispanic descent, we should be happy right now. See, we're such a compassionate people that even when hearing something like that, we still say, but can't the white man be included? Well, come on, but what about the Japanese? Some of them are nice. They make good sushi. Come on. Let's bring them in. According to the word of God, man, they ain't got it. You were the chosen ones. You were the chosen people of God. So you should be happy in that. You should relish the fact that the Lord chose you, the last person, the last nation born on the planet, over all the other nations, man. Guess what? You was chosen to be that before the world began. Before the world began. So you should be proud in the fact that you're for the nation of Israel. That the real Jews are black. A hey, great man in the Bible like Jesus Christ is black. Y'all got to be happy about that. Because guess what? When y'all go to church, man, if it's color in the Bible, that means what? It's important. There's no scripture in the Bible that's just there for filler. That's just there to take up space. We just needed something to write about in this chapter to make the Bible a little thicker. So I'm just going to put that scripture in there. Give me Proverbs 30 and 5. So these pastors and preachers that tell you, oh, it doesn't matter what color Christ is, or it doesn't matter, that's the Old Testament, brother, we ain't dealing with that. When did Christ tell you to stop dealing with any part of the Bible? When? Find the scripture.
scripture. Break it down for me. Go ask your pastor on Sunday, man. We'll ask him for you if you're mad enough to come out here. Or she, because, you know, we they diverse now. They got female pastors. Yeah, you can't do that according to the word of God. Sorry. Sorry, it don't work out like that. Somebody going off. That's why you start seeing judgments happen on some of these female pastors. I ain't going to name no names, but some of them got their brains stomped out. Because they out here in line each and every Sunday saying that they promise a God. Hey, ain't nothing happening to us. <laughs> Most high Christ. Read that. Proverbs 30 and 5. Every word of God is pure. Uh, just the New Testament. We ain't dealing with the Old Testament, brother. Read that again. Every word of God is pure. Uh, just the scriptures on love, brother. What you talking about? Read. Every word of God is pure. See, the Lord says every word of God is pure. So you can't say, well, you know, we like the scriptures on love, but all that stuff about, you know, you can't eat pork, and you can't be a homosexual, and you got to dress this way, and you can't, we ain't feeling that. No, nah, don't break that now. Stick with love. Love is the key. Love is the way. God is love. <laughs> That's all you get in church, man. Love, love, love. Yeah, he did show love. He showed love to his people. He hate dominations. You ain't know that? You ain't not most high Christ? Hate the so-called white man? Hate the Chinese? Hate the Japanese? Hate the East Indian? Hate the African? Hate the Caucasian? That take a lot to make D.C. angry, huh? <laughs> he hate everybody except for the nation of Israel. Just in case I missed your nationality. <laughs> so every word of God is pure. Give me uh, Timothy's 3 and 16. Huh? Showing you throughout the Bible, man. We're going to show you throughout the Bible that what? You can't pick what scripture you like, but the rest of the Bible, I don't deal with that. Or you know what? The New Testament caters more to my lifestyle. So I don't want to deal with the Old Testament. Yeah, that, that, that's for somebody else. Was that 2 Timothy 3 and 16? All scripture? And read that. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture. Some scripture. All scripture. It's the Old Testament. All scripture. Just the New Testament. All scripture. It's the scriptures on love, bro. Read it right. All scripture. All scripture. All means every. Every scripture. Even the ones you don't like. Even the ones that condemn your lifestyle. Even the ones that tell you you can't eat what you want to eat. Even the ones that tell you you can't dress the way you want to dress. Even the ones that tell you you can't turn your body into a damn canvas of art. What's this, this thing with tattoos, man? I don't know, brother. People, every inch of their body is tattooed up. I you don't look like a know. damn buffoon when you're 50. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you gonna look like a nut job, man. Little Wayne and baby, agree. they gonna look like idiots if they make it to see that age. Say it again. Walking around with permanent yeah. gold teeth in your body look like somebody just went crazy with a graffiti can, man. Right. So even the scriptures that condemn that, all scripture read, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's given by the divine influence of God. So God put this Bible together, man. So when you got a problem with a breakdown, you got a problem with a scripture, you got a problem with the word of God. You got a problem with the word of God. Read on. And it's profitable for doctrine. Yeah, the only doctrine you're supposed to be following is the word of God. Not the power of living, not the book of Enoch, not the Egyptian book of the dead, not a watchtower. I heard Joel's witness claim to be servants of God. They don't open the Bible to you. They come and give you a, a, a chick track. Here, read that. They can't break down the script. They can't even break down the scriptures on their own trick track, man. With the proper understanding. Listen, this Bible is profitable doctrine, which is rules, regulations, a body of principles which breaks down to the law. So you're supposed to look for the Bible to get the laws of God. Read on. For reproof. For reproof. So you want to know why we can uh, find fault with things? People say, don't judge me. You can't judge me. You're right. I'm not judging you. The Bible is. The Bible is, because I'm reading the words of God. So yeah, we say, listen, you can't eat pork. We find fault with pork. Well, I could tell you Leviticus 11 and 7 that it's an abomination. We find fault with crabs, shrimp, <laughs> lobster, clams, 
muscles. <laughs> <laughs> we find fault with all that. 